Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Factions Compared. And today we will be looking at one of my personal favorite ship classes, Battle Cruisers. Now, before we get started, just a quick announcement. Tonight, over at Twitch, I will be playing Birio Kart. And if you don't know what Birio Kart is, just Google it. Expect the show to start at about 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll put a link down in the description. Anyway, though Battlecruiser is technically a term of art within the Star Wars universe, at least under the Anaxes War College system, I'll be looking at the ship class a little more flexibly, and we'll be considering anything that is basically above a Star Destroyer in size and tonnage, while also precluding anything that is clearly dreadnought sized, or possessing a dreadnought level of power. Now, with this system, Battlecruiser takes on a very broad and varied meaning, and I think that's appropriate. That notwithstanding, in Star Wars, especially Star Wars Legends, battle cruisers are in sort of a weird spot. Now, sticking with Legends only, the Rusan Reformations meant that battle cruiser sized ships were illegal to produce, greatly limiting the amount of ship types of that size which you saw before or even during the Clone Wars, with some exceptions which we'll obviously be discussing below. Large ships, of course, saw increased usage during the Galactic Civil War as the Empire heavily militarized militarized, but surprisingly, even within the Empire, battle cruisers were rare because their utility wasn't seen as being that much more than a Star Destroyer, but they had increased costs and crew requirements while not bringing in the same fear factor or Tarkin Doctrine style overwhelming force of a Super Star Destroyer. The Legends New Republic also generally kept to smaller ships, so in other words, we have a vessel type which doesn't fit nicely into a whole bunch of differing naval doctrines. With that being said, let's start with the Empire and the Allegiance class. And I've made no bones about it, the Allegiance is one of my favorite battle cruisers and just ships generally in all of Star Wars. As I've explained before, I think one of the most compelling things about the Allegiance is the fact that it unabashedly embraces its role as a Star Destroyer. Like many Imperial capital ships, the Allegiance was made primarily for one thing, smashing through enemies. It was essentially 2.2 kilometers of powerful turbo lasers, an extra thick hull, and nigh impenetrable shields. Unlike the basic Imperial Star Destroyer, which made some effort to protect the weaknesses brought out by having such an offensively minded capital ship, the Allegiance did not. Although Star Destroyers were designed to be operated with support ships, practically they almost always operated independently, which meant patrolling and fighting alone. As a concession to this, all Star Destroyers had a hangar and strike fighters, while ISD-1s also had a point defense laser system. However, the Allegiance, like the Tector, totally abandoned the use of the hangar in favor of extra armor and presumably a lot more power generation. And I mean, look at the size of that ventral generator bulb. This is not a ship that is meant to fight on its own. It's heavily specialized with its glaring weaknesses. However, what it does do, it does perfectly, and put it in the center of a fleet, put support ships around it, and it can anchor almost any formation. It's like an exaggerated Star Destroyer, and it doesn't have the downside of bulkiness that many dreadnoughts or large battlecruisers would have. There are very few Star Destroyer types that you can call specialized, and I think this would be one of them. The main negatives are pretty obvious. It doesn't fix the standard designs associated with Star Destroyers, and obviously, the degree of specialization does limit the role it can inhabit, but I think that's okay. Next up, we have the Mediator, which unfortunately does not have any images, so bear with me. And this is kind of a tough one, because we don't know a whole lot about the capital ship, including even its total size. So we'll have to look at some general principles of Mon Calamari ships, including smaller capital ships like the MC-80-90, to while also examining how New Republic fleet progression generally works and the role that the Mediator was expected to fill within that fleet. So, the Mediator came at a sort of strange time in New Republic naval history. After the completion of several ongoing projects, including the introduction of new class ships and the Republic Fifth Fleet, but 
of course, also a relative degree of peace. While the New Republic had undergone several eras of militarization, notably after Thrawn, which saw general increase in fleet sizes, and the Dark Empire slash Black Fleet slash final Orinda campaigns, which saw the New Republic move towards larger vessels, the few years preceding the Yuuzhan Vong invasion promised peace and prosperity, largely due to the end of the Galactic Civil War and a friendly relationship with the Imperial Remnant, as led by Galad Pelion one of the Empire's first truly stable and non-aggressive leaders. The New Republic perhaps overestimated their peace and reasonably could not have foreseen a Yuuzhan Vong invasion, so there were serious questions over the necessity of future dreadnought projects like the Viscount or other similarly sized vessels. However, this presumably actually helps the Mediator class battlecruiser, as it was much more close to a Star Destroyer in size. To understand the Mediator, we have to recognize that the Mon Calamari by this point had perfected starship design, even more so than during the Galactic Civil War. During that era, they had been forced to repurpose civilian or non-warship vessels. However, with the MC-90, they were able to create a dedicated warship from scratch, and the results were truly phenomenal, with the MC-90 serving successfully throughout many campaigns until the Legacy Era. The Mediator was essentially supposed to be even a further upsize of this, but with each individual vessel being more of a threat and a singular force, almost a way for the New Republic to project power without having to build Imperial-sized dreadnoughts. The Mediator will keep them behaving, Leia said hopefully. Indeed, the battlecruiser was an impressive warship, an updated and more heavily armed and armored version of the Mon Calamari Star Cruiser. Mon Cal warships basically dominated every era because of their phenomenal shielding, their compact and practical designs, and their hangar space dedicated to incredible New Republic strike craft. Unlike the Allegiance, fighters here weren't a compromise, but actually one of the ship's best assets. Allowing the Mediator to be a proper ship in its own right while also fitting in nicely to New Republic starfighter-focused naval doctrine. Next up, we have the Republic, and like with the New Republic, we have to evaluate their ship, the Praetor, not through hard numbers, but rather context. And the most important context for the Praetor's creation was that it was a pre-Clone Wars vessel, and thus was developed under the Rusan Reformation. Admittedly, the Republic does have another battlecruiser option, the Maelstrom, but in my mind, the canonicity of that ship is questionable and we know almost nothing about it. The Praetor, on the other hand, was one of several large ship designs created by Kuat Driveyards as showpieces for their ship designing and engineering capacity. But unfortunately, the Praetor was very heavily limited by the Rusan Reformation, which disallowed completely large, heavily armed warships. So, despite being being four kilometers long, the Praetor would have had limited weaponry and an almost totally neutered hyperdrive, all in an effort to prevent individual sector defense fleets from becoming too powerful and dominating their neighbors, thus starting a war. That being said, we need to be reasonable. The Praetor was further armed after its adoption by the Republic during the Clone Wars, and we should consider it in that context. However, even so, the ship would have nonetheless been limited during the design and construction phases, with at least some aspects of the ship on a skeletal level not operating to full capacity. Even the Praetor II, a purpose-built warship, was arguably underarmed for its size, so keep that in mind. If we take the Imperial Era Praetor as a guide, the Praetor I was most likely simple in geometry, lacking the oversized bridge of a Star Destroyer or the cityscape of Super Star Destroyers, while also most likely being very large and probably having the capacity for some very serious power generation. Still, it's not only the Rusan Reformation, but also the age of the ship which limits it in this matchup. Finally, we have the Resurgent of the First Order. What I said earlier about the state of battlecruisers in the galaxy doesn't really apply to the Resurgent in Star Wars canon, because it was the main capital ship for the First Order. And I'm going to keep this one pretty simple, because it's obvious that the Resurgent comes in first, in my opinion. Although we haven't seen the ship in action, it appears to be essentially an even further upsized and up-armed allegiance, but one which hasn't been forced to give up the features which allow it to operate independently. It could carry many squadrons of advanced fighters, and according to the lore, 
mounted thousands of guns, and was geared specifically to capital ship combat. Resurgence served as mobile First Order bases. They were augmented with technology, not known outside of the First Order Navy, and aside from that, would have had a gigantic reactor with incredible power generation potential. The Resurgent was more intelligently designed than the ISD, with a more advanced point defense system and better fighters, helping to make up for the latter's anti-starfighter weaknesses, while the general shape kept the bridge closer to the Resurgent's protective weapons. All in all, going into ranking, I give this ship the first place. Coming in at number 2, purely because of the pedigree of Mon Calamari vessels and the degree to which the Mediator seemed to be a true project for the New Republic is, well, the Mediator. It wasn't a large ship, but I think head to head it could probably take on the Allegiance in combat, and combat was what the Allegiance did best. Speaking of, the upgraded Star Destroyer at 2.2 kilometers long gets the number 3 spot. Again, I think the heavily specialized Allegiance is a great ship, but it's outshined by both the resurgent Star Destroyer and the Mon Calamari Cruiser. That leaves at number 4, the Praetor. It's old, it's basic, it would probably get the job done if you needed something really heavy with a really big reactor, but I doubt even those old Rusan Reformation Limited bones could ever be put to their full potential. That however is just my opinion. Which ship would you rank first? Take a second and vote in the upper right hand corner. Also I'm curious, do you think the Praetor being much larger, but in my opinion much slower and less effective generally, could beat the Allegiance or the Mediator in a head to head fight? Let me know that as well in the comments. Anyway, until next time guys, this has been your host Eckhart Slatter. As always, have a great weekend and may the force be with you.